guys and gals, it's Gareth here from Cosmic Toys, your one and only Cosmic Toy Man. I've had some time off from the shop over the Christmas period, but that doesn't mean I've been taking it easy. Well, maybe I did for a few days, you know. So as you can see, there's already paint. Oh, there we go. Excellent. Show us the twisty feature. <laughs> Very That's good. quite clever, actually, isn't it? Uh, what you could do is you could turn Puckman round, so when he's feeling sadomasochistic, he could be going towards them when they're uh, when they're not ghosts. <laughs> there we are. I quite there like that. That's, that's pretty cool. But this weekend, I've done not one but two toy fairs. I've done the Bolton Stadium and I've done Doncaster Racecourse. Both of them hosted by the wonderful BP Fairs. Now, as I said, I was working there. I was there to sell. But I can't go to these places without meeting some awesome people. Hello oh, again. And I definitely can't go without buying some really cool things. I'm always on the lookout for decent stock to sell in the shop. But being a toy collector myself, there's always the risk that I'm going to end up spending more money on things I don't want to sell. But, I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. Before I talk about the things that I bought, I kind of need to have a look around. So let's have a look at Bolton first. Right, so we're here at Bolton. I'm almost set up. I'm now going to leave my partner in crime to finish setting up while I go for a little wonder and see what's about. Now, Bolton's not one of the larger toy fairs. It is a bit on the smaller side. I think there's about 150 stalls there, 170 stalls there. And this particular one, it was packed. Every stall was booked up and all of the traders who booked them arrived, which is unusual. Often you get empty stalls. Have a look at some of my past videos and you'll see that. Also have a look at my past videos and you'll see there's a very heavy die-cast and train-centric theme to them. That tends to be a bit of a theme with most of the BP fairs. It is what it is. But you always get a good handful of some fantastic dealers there saying the kind of toys that we, oh, kind of toys that we like. And this time was no exception. Oh, this guy's an absolute legend. He's become a regular now at Bolton and he always has some unusual and amazing goodies. You can find him, if you want to, at Instagram and on whatnot. And he's called Grimble underscore comics. Grimble comics. Like I'm not really. I used to watch that. Have you seen the telephone? Don't I remember them? Yeah, I remember those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember those. <laughs> I'll come back when you've got. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well. Oh, boy. 
wise, fashion wise, Lots and lots of die cast. This is a friend of mine's stall, Dario of DNA Toys. He had some pretty cool stuff and normally does to be fair to him and he ended up claiming a substantial portion of my budget for the weekend. But more on that later. Oh, some cool Legos. Say Legos just to keep people off. <laughs> It's a warhammer as well. Space nineteen ninety nine there from that. Yeah. 
Monsters. Yeah. 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 And these guys I never even found until the end of the day. This is Flello Toys and Castle Clay Skull. I think I got that right. Flello Toys, they make things out of resin. They make retro looking action figures out of really cool coloured resin. I like a lot of what these guys are doing. Really, really speaks to me. And then you've got Castle Clay Skull. It says it on the tin, really. They make things out of clay. And I think some of the stuff is fantastic. Now, they also had some retro toys as well, so they're not just relying on their own creations, but they had some brilliant stuff. Doing it twice. Yeah, and as long as it's as it's as it's as well. You've really been digging up the good stuff. Oh yes. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Oh, -ho. looks like he's done a good job of setting up anyway. And you should know me by now. I cannot go to Bolton Toy Fair without stopping by the Nima Studios. Say hello, Nick. Hello, hello. again. <laughs> How are you? Oh, and, we're, we're topping day, old boy. Topping day. And, and seeing you here at Bolton again at a toy fair. People are going to start talking. You realise that? They don't will. You, they People will. Are going to start talking. They're going to be like, every time you go there, you go in there. <laughs> How are you? Okay. I'm very well, thanks, Nick. Yourself? I'm very well, mate. I'm very well, mate. Good, good. Have you come to check out what's new? What's new at yeah, Let's studios? see what you've got. Sounds that's hardly new. creepy. That we should stop talking. It like does. That. It does. It does. Um, there's, to be honest, there's a lot of stuff that we've got pieces of um, that we're kind of showing off. I, I'm going to reiterate something straight up that we've been talking about and we've been hammering home on social media that this is our last show of the year. Uh, and we are closed in terms of the office for January while we go headfirst into production on everything that's outstanding. So there's a few bits on here and what I don't want people doing is looking at this and going, we've got that on the table, why haven't I had mine? It's because it's here so people can see it. 
Um, there's a lot of this stuff, as you'll notice, some of them even got prices on them because it's literally so people can see it, so they can see that we're making it and you are going to get your orders in January. So we've got some of V, there's some of V here. If you haven't seen V already, see we haven't got a complete set because again we're knee deep in production, but these are the V figures, this is Series 1. <coughs> I love these. They're cool, aren't they? Yeah, they're awesome. Uh, so those are cool. So that's V there. It's just out so people can see what's going down. Starfleet is exactly the same. So we haven't got Barry Hercules. We've got John Lee. And we've got Shiro Hagen. Some people have had those already. A lot of people waiting. We know that people are waiting. Again, January, bear with us. There's Cholton and Vanilla. Cholton and Vanilla look like they've been around forever. They are awesome. They look like they've been around forever, but this is actually the second show we've ever been able to put these out. Again, just showing people that look, they're here, they are coming, bear with us. So I can't take mine on today? No. Oh! We'll do though, don't worry, we'll make sure, but there's, uh, there's people ahead of you. See, no special treatment. Uh, Novatrons. They're not new, are they? The Novatrons. Yeah. Novatrons have been around for yeah. a while but now. They're, I think this they're is awesome. Like, I think they're this is like that. Same. That's that's actually an old one from last Valentine's it's Day. Awesome. Uh, the blank is here. Showed that off. That can take home with you today. Again, one of our custom pieces. It's the blank is one of those things that I've always wanted one, but never been able to get one, never been able to afford one. So we did what we always do and we make one. <laughs> I can't have it, I can't have it, I'll make my own. I'll make my own, yeah. I'll make my own. Uh, Ewox as always, we've got Star Wars Holiday Special, you know, because it is the holiday period. Uh, New Old Republic figures as well. New Old New Old Republic. To Demogol and Nagasato, an Alchemist and a Mandalorian. You know, why not? I'm just in the rain mix of other stuff. There's a big family down there as well. The holiday special. Those are based on the original kind of prototypes. Um, so again, it's. Very it's a blonde, it's chewy with tits. It's very odd looking at chewy <laughs> boobs. I'm going to be honest, it always has. It's, I made the thing and it's still weird. It's still weird. But um, yeah, I mean, like I say, and like I said before, there's stuff out here that you're looking at. There's stuff that we're kind of going. We've got this here so you can see it. Because obviously we, we appreciate that people get twitchy. People get nervous, people look at stuff, people think, oh, are they, not, are they actually making that? I pre-ordered it, I gave them my money. We are making it. We've said this countless times before, I'm gonna say this again, because again, if anybody didn't catch our video, hasn't catched the blog post, hasn't catch everything we've been putting this out on. We are doing, there's just two of us. We've got more staff coming on in January, though, which is good. So that's always a, always a winner, so yeah. But as I say, last, last show of the year before we have a couple of, couple of days and then we go head first into plastic <laughs> like, uh, we eat like Scrooge McDuck <laughs> sounds fun isn't it really not sounds fun gonna be like that bit with um, with Peter <laughs> the guy where he dives into the coins and smashes it himself <laughs> just torsos everywhere uh, very cool stuff as usual always a pleasure with them. And that's pretty much it for my trip to Bolton. Now, yeah, I know you want to see the pickups. You want to see what it was I bought up. You might have seen a couple of spoilers in there as to what I picked up anyway. But I'm going to show all the pickups together. So you get Bolton and Doncaster at the end of the video. So, yeah, that does bring us to Doncaster. Doncaster is a much bigger venue. I think it's 270 stalls. I'm fairly sure it's 270 stalls. Just like Bolton, this particular one was packed out. It was fully booked. None of the traders blobbed. Every stall was filled. Oh, there was some stuff there. Again, very train and die cast heavy. But as with a lot of these fairs, there's some gems there. There's some fantastic stalls there. More so at Doncaster. And now we're all set up at Doncaster. Day two of our two day excursion. Right, if you want.
trying some different things this time. People might be getting sick of seeing some of the same old stuff. So, I've been raiding the shop vaults. <clears throat> right, shall we have a look around and see what gems other people might have brought? Inflatable bath later, anyone? Got that one. Lego's becoming a big thing at these fairs now. Simpsons. I've got to keep an eye out for this chap, he's um, dodgy as they come. I was hoping that was on the motion capture fashion. I was sorry. <laughs> Well, they all look good in the deflector cases anyway. This is it. They do. I'd say, I'd in the deflector cases yeah. as they go. But I'll we'll come this morning and I'll set it up. That looked really good in the group. Go back and come straight away and just watch. <laughs> What's a good start then? I spy a Godzilla. This is where we've got the thingy from, isn't it? Yeah. 
I don't think we ever packed it out this far before. <laughs> it is, yeah. I'm guessing it's Craig. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> got some nice bits today. I saw some of your posts online yesterday. No, regarding these, that's why I recognise it. I saw them. You've got to advertise yourself, mate. You have, you have. And that as well. <laughs> Nice stuff. Yeah. Nice stuff. Ooh. Has to be the most common robot figure. I like your oven on the door. All right. See you in a bit.
How are you doing? You alright? Yeah, I'm good. Little Godzilla army there. He's cool. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Got some nice stuff. Thank like you. the jacks. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Have a good day, won't you? Oh, if only you were complete. Wouldn't be cheap though. It's actually not bad for her. Just the case. Oh, ready made your collection. Any bug lens? Yeah, I think they're the first mini bug lens I've seen today. Is it? Yeah, I think so. Are you alright, mate? Yeah. <sighs> nice battle stuff. Stuff.
Love these. I love those. Oh, God. Dare I look at the price? Very nice. They started coming back in yet. <laughs> 
Terrorhawk stuff doesn't pop up too often, does it? Ah, uh, yeah, the Terrorhawks is so wonderful. Oh, well, yeah. Okay. Oh, mate, I love to see it. Yeah? Absolutely love to it. Yeah, <laughs> and back little planets. Yeah. Oh, oh mate. Yeah. Uh, and let me guess, Starfleet as well? Oh, Starfleet. Yeah. <laughs> John Lee. Yeah, yeah. Have a good day, won't you? Right. See you later. Bye-bye. Cool. Bye -bye. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Sorry, 
How you doing, mate? You all right? Yes, you. You okay? Yeah, not bad, thank you. Not bad. It's always got a seat, I like the copter actually. <laughs> Not bad for a pound. It's alright, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Don't charge your pound for it. I promise you, you can play out. You've got a watchdog before you know it. How's the shop, right? Yeah, it's not too bad, mate. Yeah. It's not too bad. Yeah. How are you doing at the moment? Yeah, alright, mate. Alright. Yeah. I'm on holiday from work, so I'm not great. So, yeah. yeah, all good. Very good. Very I'm good. Christmas is turning. Good well. so. I don't know how I missed the Technodrome. <laughs> Complete as well? Yeah. Wow. Very good. Very good. And that was Doncaster Racecourse Toy Fair, the last one of 2023. And yeah, I'm already booked in for the first one of 2024. I think it's February, February, there's both Bolton and Doncaster coming up again in February. So if you're liking the look of these fairs, get yourself down there. Um, I don't know, maybe we get to say hello to you face to face. Right, so you want to see what it was that I picked up, didn't you? Right. Where to start? Where to start? Right. So the first thing that I picked up at Bolton Toy Fair was this bootleg ET figure. Now it's a vintage one from the 80s. From the 80s, it's in pretty good condition. Now I've recently sold one of these 15 quid. They don't tend to hang around too long either. It was marked up at eight pounds eight pounds i can almost double my money i'll get 15 quid again for it it was a no-brainer so yeah that one's going to be going up for sale in the shop the next thing that i bought at bolton was from my mate there grimble comics and yeah, it was that rebooted micro set. It's not necessarily the thing that I'm looking to get. It's not going to fit in specifically with that Mighty Max set. But I do like it because this particular character, Exadecimal, she's she fits in with that Mighty Max theme. Look at that horrible face that she's got. She's 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 not a pleasant person, and I can still hear the voice in my head as well. I thought for it is sealed. It's not at first. I thought it might have been taped back up, but it is actually sealed. Thirty quid, not bad. It's not bad at all. So it was one of those instances where I think to myself, I'll pass. But then in a year or so, I'm going to regret not picking it up. For thirty quid, I'm going to take the gamble that I might want it at a later date more than what I do now. I'm sure that when I, by the time I finish the actual Mighty Max collection, I'll start looking at stuff like this. Now, I don't think this is by Bluebird. I'm fairly sure it isn't. I can't see the manufacturer on here, actually. A toy Options Limited? Never heard of them. But it is very, very in that vein. And he... He was a diamond, he always is, he's a lovely chap and I picked this up off his stall as well. Ovian from Battlestar Galactica. It was marked up at six quid which isn't unreasonable and it does have some black marker pen on one of his hands, on one of his arms and on his leg, on his foot. But I literally want him 
to stand in there with the rest of those. You don't need to look great for that. It's just, th that's my kind of, a little bit like a rose gallery shelf. I call it my mental shelf because everything there is a little bit mental. They don't go together, but they work so well together. And he's gonna go there with them. And he was so kind, he threw that in for free. I didn't even ask. Lovely chap, lovely chap. Check out Grimble Comics. Uh, one of the other things I picked up at Bolton was a Star Wars vintage collection figure. Now this is one that I've got on order with Diamond Comics. They've been on order for over a year now. They came out months and months ago. My stock never turned up. There's this one, which is the old Marvel Comics version of Boba Fett, and there was also the Dark Horse version of Boba Fett. And neither of those ever turned up. I got the Kenno one, and I've still got plenty of them left, but this guy never turned up. So when I saw him there, and that trader in particular wanted something off me as well, I said, I'm going to do a deal. So yeah, I ended up coming away with this. That's going in my personal collection as well. Now, Dario of DNA Toys, he had those awesome Mars Attacks figures. I ended up buying stuff from him. In fact, you see in the video that he even helps me carry the stuff back. You, you see him as we get, as I get back to the stall. He's right in front of me, he puts a pile of stuff down. Yeah, that's this pile of stuff that I bought. There's this chap, V, V for Vendetta. I was going to say McFarlane toys, it's not, is it? It's Necker, it's Necker. Uh, this is a 12 inch push sound. I don't know what he says. And I'm never going to find out because the box is sealed. There's a hole there, unfortunately. But the box is otherwise sealed. So he's staying in there. This one will be going up for sale. It's not one for my collection. So yeah, watch out for that one in the shop in the new year. Now I'm going to try and do a little bit of back and forth, what's to sell, what's to keep, what's to sell, what's to keep. So I've just shown you something that's going to sell. Another thing that I got from uh, Dario were these things. Now boxes need a little bit of a wipe down, but I've never ever seen these before. Multimac. Now I'm going to do a little bit of research on them. He says that they are Woolworths, they, they are Woolworths, it says very clearly on the back, um, uh, they're imported by Woolworths, something, something along those lines anyway, there it is, um, they're actually by Silverlit Toys, but there is a label there, imported by Woolworths, and he, he was saying that these are their version of Manta Force, now I'm a big fan of Manta Force, Bluebird Toys, just like Mighty Max, this isn't Manta Force. This doesn't look like Manta Force at all to me. But I get why he thought they were. Because the figures... The figures themselves do look very much like Manta Force. The style of them. The single bend there and the only, the only other thing that moves on them are the arms moving up and down. They're very Manta Force. But the vehicles... No, that's not Manta Force at all, but just look at it, that's awesome, I'm in love, those, imagine the play value on them when you're a kid, oh, they're fantastic, I think those are great, come apart, you can swap them around with other pieces. In fact, these are probably more of a crossover between Mighty Max and Matchbox's Connectables. Connectables? Connect. I think it was Connectables. They're fantastic. And they've got that great chromeware going on with them as well. Which we now seem to have lost. Let's paint it silver instead of going chrome. These are brilliant. I love them. I, I, I really, really do like these. Um, you get quite a few in there. That's the smaller of the two sets. Whoa, lost a piece. Where did that drop from? So yeah, 
happy with that, very happy with that. They look very breaky, so I'm gonna have to be careful with them. So yeah, that one's called the Defense Constructors Unit. And then the other one is a much bigger set. That's 85 pieces. This is 165 pieces. This one's called the Ultimate Force Team. I can see my younger self playing with these for hours. Hours and hours. I can also see my younger self crying when one of them eventually breaks. And the box is just this little spares unit here is just full of bits and pieces. Now I am seeing similarities here between this one and the other one. So maybe I'll just keep the big set and sell the smaller set. Because that guy is the one that I've just shown you from the other set. And so is that one. <laughs> so maybe there's going to be one for the shop and one for me. I don't know. I'll have a little play first, let you know. And it has to be said that I am noticing some of the parts are very zoids. Some of the bits sticking out of these things, they're straight off zoids. Like I said, I've never seen these before, but if you have, let me know in the comments. If you know anything about them, what they're supposed to be, let me know. Apparently they're all friction powered. Interesting, very interesting. Now, again, from Dario, I also picked up this. I know I said I was gonna go back and forth selling everything. I wanna to stick to Dario's stuff first before I move on. This one, it's a mixture of both sell and keep. Now this one has been taped up, so it's been opened. There's one piece missing there. It's Bluebird Toys. It's a Spider-Man version of Mighty Max, and I already have one of these, but it's missing a couple of pieces. So I'm thinking I may try and make one complete one out of the two, keep that, and shift the other one on. So yeah, the, the incomplete one will be going for sale. Well, the big pile of awesomeness that I got from him was those Mars Attacks figures. Now you saw there were four figures and here they are. He had them up at £40 each, which isn't unrealistic in itself. Doesn't really leave anything in it for me, but it's there, it's there. Martian Leader, now this is the one with the purple cape. If you have a look at the back, they did the Martian Leader with the purple cape and a Martian Ambassador in the red cape, as well as a Martian Trooper and the Martian Spy Girl. And that was the run of figures. There's your Martian Ambassador in his red cape. There's your Martian Trooper. And there's your Martian Spy Girl. So we've actually got the full set of four action figures, which that's pretty cool. It says try me. Now I'm not expecting any of the sound effects in these to work. Now, these were Trend Masters, I believe. Yeah, Trend Masters, 1996. Trend Masters is one of those firms that pff, no longer with us, unfortunately. Yeah, it looks like all the batches in these are long since gone. I thought they probably would be. But yeah, there we are. Awesome! Awesome. But he didn't just have the figures, did he? Oh, 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 oh. 
Now the next piece, which is part of that one job lot, is probably my favourite pickup of the entire two days. And that's this. Mars Attacks Bash and Brain Disintegrator. Yeah, we like this one. We really do like this one. And this one... It's going to be difficult to sell this one. I've, I've had my eye on one of these for a long time, but they, they, they never go cheap. They never go cheap. And I think this wasn't cheap. It, it did me a deal on the on the whole pile. Uh, as you know, he had 40 quid each on those. He had 50 on this. He did me the whole lot for 150, so that's 30 quid a piece. Gives me a chance of selling those with a tenner a piece markup. Uh, there would have been more of a profit in this, but uh, I want to keep it. But if I keep it, I'll take it out of the box and get some batteries put in there. It probably needs that doing anyway, just to make sure that there's no leaky batteries in there. And he was, he was a very kind chap, was Dario. He threw me in a Stranger Things beanie hat. And that brings me to the end of the Bolton pickups. But what did I pick up from Doncaster? Now Doncaster, I bought very little. Very, very, very little. First thing that I picked up was this guy. I was quite excited when I saw it, especially when I saw that price label hanging off it. Two pounds for a Daleks rollicking. Oh. I thought, I bet it's just an empty box. No, there is indeed a Dalek in there. It's the red one, metallic red one. It's got no arm, no arm, no gun, no eye, unfortunately. Uh, I knew that going in, but I thought, you know what? I don't actually have any Dalek Rollikins, so... I thought I could always try 3D printing one. You know, the, the, the bits for them. So yeah, that's a keeper. Next one, I ain't keeping this. <laughs> it's a Godzilla piece. It's an awful, nasty, really, really horrible porcelain. It's not porcelain, is it? It's plaster. It's nasty. It has a slot on the top, so it is a money box, but it has no hole underneath, so it's a, a smash if you want to claim your deposits back but as horrible as he is I also thought he had a particular charm to him and that neon green that toxic nasty green I like it it's one of those things that oh my god that's awful I love it how weird's that but he ain't going in those cabinets. This'll be going in the bootleg shop. Uh, sorry, not the bootleg shop. In the bootleg cabinet at the shop. There was him. Now, I didn't buy this at Doncaster Toy Fair. And if you watch any of his videos, you'll see that Theo from Slime House is always going. He, he never misses a Doncaster Toy Fair. He always stops by and has a chat with me. He's an amazing guy. And I don't know if you realise, but several years ago, he brought out a film. He released it on DVD. It actually got an official DVD release. And I have that film. It's a good bit of fun. Good bit of fun. And I took it along with me and just said, would you mind doing me a favour, Theo? Would you sign it? <laughs> and it put a smile on his face when he was asked and it was kind enough to sign it for me. So um, I now have a signed DVD that, that Theo 
wrote, direct, and starred in. And he signed it for me. Legend, thank you very much, Theo. You're a star. Literally. That's staying in my collection. The last of the pieces I've got to show you, they're not, I've got to take this off. I've got to take that off. I've had enough. <laughs> yeah, the last of the items I've got to show you, they all came as a bundle deal from a very friendly trader who I see there fairly regular. The first one is this old MB jigsaw puzzle, 100 piece puzzle of Megatron from the Transformers. And first off, it was just a box that caught my eye. Obviously you've got a vintage looking Transformers box there, which love the artwork on it. Really do love the artwork. You wouldn't expect a jigsaw puzzle to be in that type shape or size box. So caught my interest straight away. There was that, and he also had these two seven of nine figures on his stall. Now I don't sell a lot of the Playmate Star Trek figures, but it's seven of nine. There's always a call for seven of nine. So I asked him how much he wanted for them. And his response was, a lot. Am I missing something here? They're not generally worth a, a huge amount at the Playmates Star Trek figures. So he said, seriously, he says, I'm not gonna tell you the price until you've had a look on eBay on your phone. So I did. And I went, yeah, this is, it's only 15, 20 quid max. He went, no, 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 Have another look. And he was right. I didn't realise the one that I spotted was the normal one where she's in a silver outfit. This ain't a silver outfit. The accessories are also different. This one, I, d I don't know where this one came from, but it's some kind of exclusive. Now, there have been two that have recently sold on eBay. One of them went for 235 quid. The other one went for 188. What? What? Neither he nor I can tell you why this particular figure is worth that much. But he did, um, he did say, I'm not looking for that. You can have it for X price. And I'm okay, fair enough. My gut's saying, but it's Playmate Star Trek, you're never going to shift it. Those eBay sales that went for that kind of money, that's also US based. And there's probably more collectors for them over there. But he also turned around and said to me, you can have it for 100 quid. And I was like, well, that leaves room for a profit, doesn't it? So I looked at it, I looked at it, and I noted that the big problem, I think, that's going to affect the value at least, the blister is coming away just there. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. The blister's firmly attached all the rest of the way around. There's a bit of a crease there. And there's a bit of one running across the top of the card as well. But it's still that figure. So it's going to still have some of that value. And he said, if you buy that, I'll throw you that one in, for free. I said, really? He said, yeah. So I had a look, and that one goes for about 35 quid. So it seemed realistic as a deal. Um, he saw that I was still umming and ahhing. He said, well, make me an offer. Really? That's still not your bottom line? And he, he is a, he's a really nice chap, and he's always open for negotiations. So. I said, well, I want all of these off you. 90? Done. He, he nearly bit my hand off at that. I was like, I could have got them cheaper. <laughs> but I, no, I, I felt 90 was fair for both him and for me. It gives me a little a bit of wiggle room on that if I come, when I well, when I do come to sell it. So yeah, those will be going up in the shop soon and quite likely so will that, unless a certain person claims it. And that's... That is, isn't it? 
Yeah. <laughs> That's everything that I picked up at both Bolton and Doncaster Toy Fairs. Not a huge amount, not loads and loads, but I still spent too much. Now next week we should be back to the usual What's New at Cosmic Toys videos that usually go out every Tuesday. This one I understand is running a little bit late because it's taken an awful lot of editing, it's taken an awful lot of filming and I still ain't done. Obviously because I'm still filming. There's probably something secular there but never mind. Anyway, if you like this kind of video, like it. <laughs> I've hit 500 subscribers now, so I am not going to keep asking you to subscribe. Although, if you haven't already, you might as well. And remember to ring that ding-a-ling to be notified of future content. Now, thanks for very much for watching, and I'll catch you again next time. Bye-bye.